All right. Well, you know, we've all uh, seen it. If you work in manufacturing, you have uh, a, a part design mm -hmm. is sent out for production, only to hit repeated snags as questions come up about uh, datums and locators and symbols and values on the drawings. Uh, and these can often result in serious delays in nonconformance issues, which results in wasted products and, hey, who the heck wants that, right? Uh, according to Gary Bell, author of Realizing the Value of gd and in Model-Based Definition, companies that still use 2D drawings in their product life cycle are doing more than simply ignoring the increased productivity that comes from streamlining their models. They are also failing to provide their customers the best, most cost-efficient products and services that can only come from implementing a single, comprehensive, digital model that all stakeholders can really effectively utilize. So the goal is to move away from 2D renderings to a completely digital design solution. Companies that incorporate digital DG&T with model-based definition 3D models, and we'll get to uh, model-based definition in a bit, uh, those companies can create more accurate representations that speed up the design and production processes, reduce waste, and improve communication and collaboration. So with us via Skype today to talk to us about GD&T, MBD, and Digital Twin is Gary Bell. Gary is the dimensional engineer specializing in GD&T and dimensional management. Hi, Gary. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Hey, no well, problem. Thanks for being with us, Gary. Well, let, let, let's start with GD&T. Um, it, it's been around for a long time. Um, uh, many people know what GD&T is all about, but we've really kind of seen an expansion, a, a boom, I guess you could say, in the last decade in its usage. Why would you say that is? And, and, and is it maybe because it's easy to, to generate or, or calculate uh, in today's CAD software, or is it something else? What, what, what's your opinion on that? Well, I would say that it, it's twofold. Um, one is um, with the onset of dimensional management, which is um, something that's been growing in the industry, people are now realizing that uh, if they apply their GDT based on the overall assembly product, they have a better chance of meeting their final build quality goals. Um, so dimensional management is what's making um, the OEMs start doing more and more GD&T, but you are correct. Um, some of the other errors that happen is if you design your product and then have to create a separate drawing to define the dimensional requirements, you wind up with errors, and uh, you can, uh, <clears throat> and it doubles up your work. Now. Uh, as um, technology moves on, you can start adding your GD&T to the 3D CAD. So the supplier who's manufacturing the part, he only needs to get one file, and all the information that he needs is in that one file, controlled by the uh, drawing release or the part release process. And and is this where model-based definition comes in? Because I'm I, I know what GD&T is. I'm I'm only kind of somewhat familiar with what model-based definition is. So, so maybe if you can just kind of describe that to us, what it is kind of in, in lay terms, and then how that ties into GD&T. Sure, so you know, model-based definition is, if you think about uh, back in the old days, we, we would you know, design a product on a piece of paper. And uh, that piece of paper would have to be converted into a physical, real 3D part. Now, um, with computer-aided design, the product is in 3D space to scale. So model-based definition is your product in the computer, um, 3D actual part. Okay. And, and how does that tie into, how does GD&T work so, into this as well? Yeah, so what happens is uh, we now design our products in, in the 3D CAD, and they're perfect. So during the design phase, everything works fine, everything's perfect, but now we have to actually make physical parts. So that's where the gd &T is documenting how much variation the manufacturers can have to make that part. So you know that would have to be documented in the 2D drawing and uh, passed over to the supplier and then he would try to make that part within that drawing. 
now that documentation is embedded in the actual 3D CAD model-based definition. So the more information that we can keep in the computer, the more efficient we get. And, and how does, what is a digital twin then? So I'm, I'm trying to kind of connect all yeah. these pieces in my head. So we've got GD and T, which kind of the, the dimensional tolerances. You've got the, the uh, model-based definition, which like you said, is kind of the, 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 the electronic 3D model, which also has all the information about the part, including GD and T. What is a digital twin then? So, okay. So let's just go, let's say it this way. The model-based definition would be the 3D CAD part design. Okay. The, the digital twin is as we are moving closer and closer to representing what's really going to happen when we go into production inside the computer. So this is what's very exciting about next week is the digital twin is going to include the gd &T, which is the part tolerance definition, and then with 3DCS, our tolerance analysis software, we actually vary those parts. So when you design your product, it's perfect in the CAD system. But when you make it, you can't make perfect parts. gd t defines how out of perfect it can be. Then 3DCS, which is inside the CAD system, can apply those tolerances to the parts, build your product, and predict how well will your design function in real life. So, so the, digi the digital twin is essentially representing uh, a better representation of what we think we can build. So does that, does, that mean, does that mean that somehow you tell the software what the variance is that your actual production process can do and whether that variance in your production process will actually allow you to make this the perfect part with, with along with the GD and T specs and, and is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, so <laughs> to take it full circle in the CAD system we define how much the parts can vary you are correct we will actually simulate that variation by deviating the piece parts and then building the product and then we can predict how well will we be able to build our assembly. One, will it always build? Two, when it does build, is it within the quality specification we want? And to take it a step further, then if you actually start making parts, so when we're doing it in the CAD system during the design phase, we are applying tolerances that we think we can make. Then we actually and, and we catch errors and we improve our design to reduce our risk when we go into production. Once we get into production, now we're measuring real parts and they might not be within the spec that we defined with the gd &T. So then we bring that data back into the computer and run the analysis again. And we can say, okay, with our true manufacturing capability, how good will our quality be? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a picture here then. So, so just in, 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 in lay terms, the first thing you, you might do with a digital twin is a simulation based on what you think your production capabilities are, but later on as, as you actually start to produce parts and measure them and see what you're actually producing, you can feed that real data back in and run, a, run an analysis or a simulation again? Either I'm saying it very well or you're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must be very smart. It's obviously what it is. You're saying it very well, Gary. It's, it's obviously me. <laughs> you're saying it very well, Gary. Good, good job. You clear. understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if, our, if our viewers are interested in this topic, uh, and, and, and you can tell that Gary is very familiar with it, and mm -hmm. he's going to go into a lot of detail on this, you might like to know that we're bringing you a webinar next week titled Quality 4.0, how CAD gd and drives model-based definition with three DCS tolerance analysis software. That's the software we're going to be talking about. Uh, Gary Bell will be your presenter here, and I'm your host. So check it out. The event is uh, this coming Thursday, mm -hmm. October 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, 
There is a link to register both in Gary's article and also on the player page. There's also a link out to the webinar. You can click on that, go out and, and register. It'll be a very informative, uh, very informative webinar uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in moving to a full uh, digital uh, digital twin type system, mm -hmm. or even just GDNT in general and uh, uh, CAD. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Gary, thanks for being with us this morning. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks, Gary. We'll see you on Thursday. All right. Okay, so much time.